Mm-hmm. Well, Gigi, now it's time for us to take a little trip. Put your hands up in the air, sweetie. We are about to go into the past. It's time for the time machine. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, Gigi. Look, here we are. We're in Woodstock, Illinois. Oh, God. And look, there's little Sam running. Where? Where the Where is he? Uh, he's turning it. I can't see him. Uh, now, Gigi, oh, what were you like as a kid? Oh, wait a minute. Look, look at that. Look. Oh, oh there you are. And yes. you were still giving a little off the shoulder oh, moment. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh Those God, the, shoulders are the still The parallels, there. honey. My childhood was, um, it was, it was really good, and I had a lot of support from my mom and my brothers. My dad's a different story, but irrelevant. Um, I just was lucky to be able to live in the skin that I was in and never be questioned about it. I never had to wonder whether I was dressed as a girl or a boy. I never had to wonder whether I could bring my dolls to school mm. or stuff like that. It was just some, my mom, just her main goal was that her children are happy, which if you are a parent out there, that should be your main goal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that obviously your your mom, we've heard a lot about your mom because yeah. she's your creative collaborator for all the drag race looks. And it seems like she obviously fostered a wonderful environment for you to be as creative as you could. What was your, your favorite? What was your favorite game to play as little Sam back in the day? Um, I mean, the only, the first and like only movie I ever watched as a kid was Wizard of Oz. Uh huh. So any character I got to be, preferably the female ones, um, <laughs> was that was playtime for me. I remember I had this like little black and silver metallic cape that you know instantly you put it on. You're the Wicked Witch of the West, and yes. it would just be running through the halls back and forth. Um, I think that's just like the biggest memory I have is always related to the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> You can serve it as Dorothy, yes. you can serve it as the witch. Uh-huh, sometimes Toto. Right, a little tinfoil. <laughs> yes. And sweetie, you are the tin woman. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, you did theater as a kid, right? Because your mom w worked for any children's theater when you did costumes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, is it true that she used to bribe you with American Girl dolls to perform? That is 100% true. <laughs> Tell me about that. Uh, well, at first... First, I really did not want to do theater. It was a real bribe. She was like, you have to do this. Like, your brothers are away at church camp, and you didn't want to do that. So you're going to sit here, do theater, so that she can be at home alone during the mornings. Um, so her incentive was an American Girl doll. And then, of course, I did it and fell in love with it. But then y every year, I was like, I can get something out of this. Uh -huh. If I pretend <laughs> I don't want to do it, she'll get me another American Girl doll. So needless to say, I had a few American Girl dolls as a child, but <laughs> um, it, 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 it really um, it grew and cultivated me into the creative person that I am today. I have so much um, admiration and gratitude for theater. What roles were you playing at that point? Um, my first role was in High School Musical Junior as the skater boy number two. Skater boy number two, <laughs> a very important role. Yes, I didn't have any lines in that one. Um, but I did the, my last year of Children's Summer Theater, which I believe is eighth grade. Um, I was Jojo in the Seussical. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then moved into high school theater where I got to be like Gomez and Adam's family. And um, I think those are my most iconic roles. Uh, this uh, is where we're at with high school theater, Erica, uh, <laughs> that we're, they're doing high school musical, the Adam's family. Well, uh, I, I was doing High School Musical as a fifth grader. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Gigi, you were very advanced. <laughs> very advanced. Honey. Uh, now, it seems like, Gigi, on Drag Race, you, uh, you brought in so many different pop culture references into all your looks, so I'm only able to imagine that, as a kid, you were really soaking up a lot of different movies, TV shows, and you told me that that's part of, like, from your mom, that she was introducing you to that? Well, my mom is responsible. Here's the, you want to know the tea? Here's I want to know the tea. Um, not to pull a plastic or anything, uh -huh. but most of these pop divas, I had no knowledge about until I got to college. Uh -huh. um, my mom grew up listening to The Carpenters and Donny Osmond, Aretha Franklin, um, ELO, like all these just not Madonna, not Britney, not Beyonce. I had no idea who those women were until I got to college. And then when I moved here and became friends with the House of Avalon, ah. was when the homework really started. Oh, yeah, sweetie. Yes. Yeah, so that is, I, I feel in a sense that I'm, I'm glad that I'm just now really learning about all these 
pop culture references because it's so fresh to me and it's so exciting and and all of that but I I'm so glad that like my roots are with like ABBA and Karen Carpenter and um, I, I just you know I hold on to that and those people now you started drag at 15? Mm-hmm. Gigi, you make us all old people <laughs> feel like we waited way too long to get started. <laughs> uh, no, that, but you always wore makeup and played dress up. We have a, yeah. a little picture, I think, here. Oh, oh my goodness, is that you at 15? Yes. Sweetie, she yes. was giving biological woman I even know. then. And the tights did not match, honey, not at all. You were giving an Avril Lavigne realness at that moment. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea, she of was, course. She was my diva at that time. Amazing. I was like, for some unknown reason, that's like she's the only person I performed to, and I would like always just wear a long synthetic blonde wig. Right. I thought I was giving you the only moment. Yes. Um, but I mean, needless to say, there was some growth to be had. Uh-huh. <laughs> looking like a boy that probably robbed you a few days ago. I was gonna say Chloe Sevigny. Ooh, oh, yeah. I mean, I you love that. So many different looks. I Chloe Sevigny definitely pumped that look. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So what was the beginning years of drag? It's not like you could perform perform at clubs. Where were you performing? Or were you one of those, were you Aquarius style, sneaking into the club in your lip? Oh, no. The first time I ever entered a gay nightclub bar was when I was 20 years old and moved to Los Angeles. Wow. So, I mean, I, I was born and raised in Chicago, had never gone to a bar down there until I moved here and had to get a booking down there. But um, for me, like at age 15, it was a small group of really young queens around my age that would throw these sh shows at um, substance-free venues oh. that were also indoor rock walls by day. <laughs> <laughs> so I took advantage of that during some numbers, don't get me wrong. I um, bet you did. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was lucky to have a, a venue and an outlet to, to do this stuff. Um, because you know I was like a bedroom queen for so long, but I didn't have access to a camera for all that time. Right. So when I had kind of gotten comfortable with it and was able to get on stage, and I had done theater, so it was just like to me, it was just the perfect marriage of everything I was good at. I was l I'm very lucky to have been able to do that at such a young age. Now, was your mom dressing you up even during the Iggy Azalea days? When did that collab start? <laughs> During the Iggy Azalea days was when my mom did not know what I was doing. Drag. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. So I would sneak away, and um, inevitably, Snapchat happened, and I became brothers with friends with my brother on Snapchat. He saw something I was doing, told my parents. That's how they found out. Wow. Um, and what was that reaction like? Because now, was that were you out to your parents before that, or was it all in one? No, I've, I mean, like I've been out since okay. I was outed from the womb. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> and. That's never been, you know, a, a big issue, but um, it was, it's it's different territory than just being gay or than d playing dress up in your own house, mm. in your own playroom. Um, and I knew that. And when, when my mom found out, um, my dad would have nothing to do with it. Like, he just didn't even want to hear about it, didn't want to know, out of sight, out of mind. My mom found out, and she was very, very offended by it and very taken aback and, and um, she's always put other people before her, so when she heard about it, she was like, how is this any different than doing blackface? Oh. She thought that we were putting on, you know, women's clothing to mock women, mm -hmm. to make fun of women, and, and needless to say, it, it didn't take too long for her to figure out what it really was. Right. And when she did, that's when the, the magic began. Um, and she started making these gorgeous garments for me and um, it actually started with this cedar closet that we have in our basement that's just full of 50s dresses right so for a long time like four years I was just strictly 1950s housewife nice. uh, and I wore yellow gloves with every single outfit I had a pair of yellow gloves and um, it, it just turned from that into my mom you know just starting to make me things and it all snowballed and then I went to college dropped out of college moved to LA and she would send me one look a week really I love that your mom was like, you know what? I like drag now, and sweetie, we're doing this. Look at her. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You're like, oh, well, I saw that other girl, and Gigi, <laughs> I want to let you know, you're going to have a way better look than her. <laughs> Mommy's got it covered. Yes, yes. I mean, she had no idea what Drag Race was until I auditioned for it. So. Right, wow. That is Fun. So you did. You went to um, you went to university. You dropped out. You were majoring in art, like visual art, or I was art education. Okay. 
And then luckily at my school, they put freshmen in to student teach. And usually at most schools, you, when you're seniors, when you go into the classroom and student teach. Uh -huh. So thankfully they put me in a classroom and I said, no, the fuck thank you. Mm. And um, I just decided that was not where I wanted to go. So I changed my major because it was my mom's alma mater um, just to stay there and I was miserable. So I just, you know, dropped out. <laughs> and LA, here you came. Mm -hmm. She's got the frame for fashion <laughs> and she's ready to take on the world. Apparently. So what was that now? How long was it before you moved to LA when you were 18? No, I moved to LA two years ago. Two years, sweetie. Was, yeah, you've just 20. taken it by storm. How <laughs> very <laughs> dare you. <laughs> so that first year in LA was, did you dive straight head into the drag scene here? Not intentionally. Mm -hmm. No, I wanted, I came here to be a beauty boy. I wanted to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a makeup artist, go to all the events, be on like, you know, the PR lists and all of that, um, which did happen um, slowly. And then I did one drag booking because someone asked me, someone like saw my Instagram and asked me to do it. And then there just happened to be a slew of WeHo nightclub promoters there that night. And I just started getting booked and booked and booked and booked. And I had to quit my job that I had gotten um, because I was in drag so much. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, I, I, it really like took off quick. And how did you like, were you performing at FUBAR, Mickey's? FUBAR was my first bar that I ever performed at. And actually I do want to say uh, my most sincerest condolences Thank you. Um, for the loss of such an iconic and, and big hearted person. Um, but Lady Red was one of the first people that I met because of FUBAR. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was my, my very first gig and it was magic. Uh, I mean, when you were on Drag Race, Lady Red, love you, sweetie. She said, oh, I know her. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> she used to let me in when she would look at all my friends' IDs. Yeah. And she wouldn't, she'd be like, go, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you, you got to LA, that, well, that wasn't the first time you applied for Drag Race that year, was it? Did you send one in, an audition tape in earlier when you were not of age? Correct, yes. In uh, college at Millican University, I decided at the age of like 18, just for fun, I knew I wasn't gonna get on, because obviously you have to be 21 with like the vodka sponsors. Um, and I just did it for fun, and it was, it, I knew I wasn't gonna get on, and I just had a good time with the tape. It's a horrible tape, I will <laughs> never reach the light of day, but I'm glad that I did that, because then uh, doing my like real audition, I kind of understood what they were looking for, and thank God there was not an acting challenge for that one, um, but yeah. And then, then it happened. And then it happened. <laughs> well, I told myself, I was like, there is no way in hell I'm not getting on this season <laughs> right. when I was auditioning. You're like, I'm an influencer and I'm ready now to be a worldwide star, <laughs> darling. Yes. Now make sure you're all not only following Gigi, but following us on all social media. Hey Queen, t at Hey Queen TV. That's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Christian Mingle. Erica, what other sites are you uh, loving? JDate. Oh, of course. Our profile on JDate <laughs> is serving <laughs> you up. <laughs> all right, Gigi, it's time, honey, to get into it. Get into it. Get into it. And we are going to talk all about your experience on Drag Race. Okay. So you were a finalist. You came in second place, third place. It could be up to whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, uh, sent home by Jada in the finale. What a cast. Dahlia, Rock, Nikki, Aiden, Britta, Jan, Widow, Heidi, Jackie, she who shall not be named, and Crystal Method, and of course, Jada. Um, what, what a great cast. I, I could not be any luckier with who, who, end up, who ended up on that season. It was just like harmony. It was great. It was almost a RuPaul's best friend race that year. Yeah. Because y'all really did seem to like each other, get along. I mean, there was a little typical snipping here and there, but mostly it was, seemed like an extremely supportive environment. Yeah, I mean, I, w I was expecting to be in the middle of so many cat fights before I, I made it onto set. And I was so elated and happy that everyone was just like in it for each other. Everyone knew at the end of the day, this is, uh, it's a competition, but if this girl needs help with something, I'm going to help her. It's not going to set me back. Yeah. So you 
what what was it that how long did you know that you wanted to be on Drag Race? Like, and how when did you start watching Drag Race? Um, I started watching Drag Race when season seven was airing, okay. um, and I have a lot of love for Violet. She's my favorite girl on the season. Um, and you're paying tribute to her tiny waist <laughs> today. I'm sure you're doing her proud. <laughs> well, she she's one of the first queens that I saw that um, mixed the campiness that I love with the the fashion streamline that I love. And yeah. so that that was a big inspiration for me. But I didn't want to be on Drag Race until I started working so much in drag here in LA. Um, so, I mean, I, I really made the decision to like seriously audition for the show like a month before I auditioned. And what was the prep? Like when you, when you got it back, do you have like two weeks or whatever to pull the looks together? Were you pulling it from your closet? Did you call your mom right up and be like, it is happening, mom, <laughs> quit your job, this is it. Well, I knew that I, I wanted to wear as many pieces that my mom had made as possible. And I also knew that there wasn't a lot of time for her to make a lot of things. So the only thing she actually made me for the show was my Eleganza prom blue satin um, look, which I love. It's still to, to this day one of my favorites. Stunning. Um, she Easy. was working on that right as I was leaving to get into the van, you know. Um, but I, I did wear a lot of other pieces, which thankfully fit into a lot of the themes uh, for the runway and, and did work with some other designers. And it was way more fun than stressful to prepare for it. That so. was certainly a good time to be in LA. <laughs> You'd be like, I'm going to camp very soon and I need your help. I don't know how like Heidi did it. Oh or yeah. I think Jada is su such a talented seamstress mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously everything she wore, she did herself. So. Wow. I mean, I mean it's a lot to get it together to go on there, honey. No kidding. Hello children. Come